Hey, this is Vaughn at Spirit of Health. Hey, I wanted to have a heart to heart with everyone here about diabetes. So if you have diabetes or a friend or a loved one, everyone probably knows somebody these days who's diabetic. So I strongly encourage you to share this with those that you love that need to hear this information. But I wanted to share some important uh, information, uh, some myths about diabetes, um, that there's a true root cause, what the medical system says about it. And so I would start with having everyone understand that as of 2021, that's the last statistic we really have, uh, just a couple of years ago, it was estimated that over 38 million people, that's 11% of the population, have diabetes. That's a pretty frightening number. <clears throat> Again, that's very likely uh, yourself or someone that you know. And unfortunately, we are not shared the truth, as most of you probably know by now, uh, related to uh, mainstream medicine. And we are told that it is a uh, blood sugar dysregulation disorder of which there is no known cause. Uh, that is not true. They will say that it's genetic. Uh, that is not true. Uh, they will tell you that there's no cure. That is also not true. Now in this video, I'm not going to dive into the difference between type one and type two. And of course, type one is absolutely more challenging, more complicated, harder to reverse, et cetera. But somebody who's pre-diabetic or diabetic type two, uh, I 100% know. I, I don't just believe, I know it because I've seen it because I've been in practice for 15 years and seen over 10,000 people. I've seen lots of people reverse diabetes and you do not have to be a statistic or live by a label or a diagnosis or believe the things that they tell you. So that right there might be a pretty eye-opening uh, way to start this video and, and to give you some understanding. My, my goal is to give you hope and to know that there are answers and there's absolutely um, healing possible. And I've seen it happen dramatically quick um, in, in as little as a month. Of course, it can take longer for most people, I'd say three to six months, but in little as a month, you can be shocked at how much progress somebody uh, can make. I've seen many, many, many people get off their medications. So uh, what is it? You know, is it genetic? Is it, you know, is it a blood sugar problem? Is it a insulin problem? Uh, the reality is it's a metabolic disorder. So think about metabolism. What is metabolism? Metabolism is the body, uh, the ability of our body to take in a substance and convert it into energy or a usable substance. Think of like a factory, uh, different ingredients going into something in a factory to produce a finished product. In this case, the finished product would be energy. But because there's metabolic problems, the body can't produce energy. So guess what? There's a cause. We're all about root cause medicine. Something is caused by something else. It's, there's, it's a little bit, so genetic is kind of the excuse um, a lot of doctors use or the medical system use because they don't really understand root cause medicine or believe in cause and effect, which to me seems a little odd that we wouldn't believe in cause and effect, that we could believe it's just random or uh, completely misunderstood or again, <clears throat> Uh, genetic is a way to say that there's a cause, but again, still nothing we can do about it and it leaves you kind of feeling hopeless, but there's absolutely a, a cause. So what interferes with metabolism? That's the question. If there's a metabolic disorder, what's causing the metabolic disorder? And I'm gonna give you two primary reasons and I'm not saying there's, there's not more, but I wanna give you two primary reasons that we have a metabolic disorder problem. Number one is simply excess. And what I mean by that is, is an absolute reality that we eat the wrong foods, we eat too much food, 
we eat too much of the wrong foods, uh, etc. And so your body is amazingly designed by God to be a very efficient system or an efficient factory. And if you overwhelm it, <clears throat> just like if you overwhelm anything, if you put too much trash in your trash can, if you put too much stuff down the garbage disposal too fast, if you put too much things into a factory that's the wrong ingredients, you are going to have failure. You're going to have problems. So yes, diet does matter. And that's why uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, diet changes, 100% is crucial and key for somebody overcoming any metabolic disorder. Now, I will also share that it's not just about your diet, because I know a lot of people who are diabetic, and that's you know a lot of people that come to me, and they get the diet thing. Now, they might have not done well in the past, but they're like, man, I, I've changed my diet. I've cut out sugar. I've cut out a lot of you know grains or carbs or some of these things, and I'm still struggling. I'm still having uh, a blood sugar problem, a metabolic problem, and I can't seem to get over the hump. Or... So this goes back to root cause medicine. Reason number two, so again, number one is just excess. We are eating too much and too much of the wrong things. You're overburdening your system and you're keeping it from uh, having the ability to properly process things because it's excessive. But two is toxins, poisons. We live in a world where we're absolutely toxic. Our bodies are poisoned. And so what interferes with metabolism? Well, a whole lot of things interfere with metabolism. I'll tell you the number one thing I see clinically is infectious disease. So people have candida, yeast, fungus, mold, clostridia and other bacteria, parasites, Lyme disease, viruses. I believe viruses are the main trigger that cause type 1 diabetes. I had a, uh, a young man who had type 1 diabetes. I immediately tested him and found parvovirus at extremely high levels. Looked it up in, in, the, in the studies. It's on PubMed. It's researched. It's known that viral conditions can trigger autoimmune, like type 1 diabetes. So there's a cause, and it's often infectious. So what's interfering with your body's ability to metabolize food properly? So if we can work on eliminating the excess, changing the diet, lessening the, the amount of food we eat, lessening the amount of meals we eat, like with intermittent fasting, and we can remove the infectious disease organisms or other toxins, herbicides, pesticides, metals, other things can interfere, but I will say from experience, the primary issue people have diabetes and can't get rid of it is infectious disease organisms and if it helps, I just want to explain it a little bit deeper so that you're not... Anyway, I, I just think knowledge is power. And I think if you understand this, maybe it'll make sense. So you eat food, sugar, and your body should convert it into energy or fuel or ATP at the cellular level. If you have those things I mentioned, bacteria, candida, yeast, fungus, mold, etc., that sugar or starch or carb that you eat now becomes food for that infectious disease organism. The body cannot convert it into energy or fuel. The body converts it to lactic acid and people develop lactic acidosis. That acid deposits in the joints and causes degenerative disease. That's what leads to the kidney failure and the neuropathy and the retinopathy and all of the horrible things associated with the progression of an illness such as diabetes because there's a buildup of acid waste in the body. And if you study medical literature in the early 1900s, you will find that 
all universities in medicine taught lactic acidosis as the main cause of degenerative disease. Diabetics are at the highest risk of what? Heart disease. Why? Lactic acidosis. So, repeating, you eat sugar, starches, and carbs. They're not evil monsters. The problem is there's a metabolism problem. The problem is, is you have infectious disease organisms consuming those carbs, replicating, producing toxic wastes, because metabolism's not working or very inefficient and the body can't handle the excess sugar, it converts it into lactic acid that it stores in the body and the joints and the tissues and the organs starting this process of degenerative disease. So how do you heal it? How do you reverse it? Well, there's multiple factors. You have to reverse lactic acidosis. You have to get the acids out of your body. We have to clear any toxins or poisons or infectious disease organisms from your body. We have to change our diet. And I know sometimes that is challenging, but it is crucial and it works. And there are products that can help. There's therapies that can help. There's all kinds of natural things that can help. But of course we know what the medical system is gonna offer you is maintenance. It's disease maintenance. It doesn't help and, and, and reverse anything. It might make your blood work numbers look better but guess what? The disease process continues. You continue to get more and more sick, more lactic acidosis, more degenerative disease, higher and higher risk of chronic illness, kidney failure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because all those medications do is manage the disease. And so again, share this with people you know and you love. We can do blood work to see what's going on. We can run all kinds of amazing labs to see if you have toxicity, infectious disease, which one, and treat it properly. There are answers and solutions. And so I'll just give you a couple of my favorites uh, just for those of you who, you know, maybe you're not interested in, in setting up a consultation or you can do it all yourself, but I, I love people to contact us. And I like working with people that want to reverse their chronic illness, because I believe everybody has a God-given purpose in life. And how do you achieve your God-given purpose when you're consumed with this label or this chronic illness? And I don't believe it was God's intention at all for anyone to live with chronic illness or to live with diabetes or, or these types of labels or diagnosis. And yeah, God's a healer and he can heal us with miracles, but I also believe that like changing your life and utilizing the things God created, the power and the healing power of God is within us. We're created in the image of God. The bodies are designed to heal. That, my friends, is absolutely a miracle as well. And so we should be pursuing those things as well. And so I love uh, metabolic vibrance by vibrant health. I love GCO, Gluco Optimizer by Cellcore. Black seed oil is phenomenal for helping a beta cell function of the pancreas. Um, Canicurmin uh, by North American Urban Spice is kind of my go-to all things uh, for anti-inflammatory, um, helps with gut function, but all of those herbs and uh, natural spices in there are going to help with blood sugar regulation. And I'm not a big fan of just taking a zinc and vanadium and cinnamon and all these, like they're common mainstream things that people take and that's fine that they help, but take a formula that's going to help you. But remember, this is key. If you just take one of the things I just mentioned, that, that's great. That's a great natural alternative maybe to a medication. You might see improvement, but you are still managing your condition and I want you to fix it. I want you to reverse it. I want you to heal. I want you to have a testimony that God healed me in my body and I no longer have this issue anymore. 
So that's where I strongly encourage you to reach out to us or some practitioner that can help you understand these processes in the body, be a detective, find the root cause of why you have said condition and teach you, empower you, educate you on what to do so that you can reverse it, you can be healthy, you can be well, and you can achieve your God-given purpose in life. Mm -hmm.